And the big question this week, uh, given that Mark Purden, along with his training partner Natalie Rasmussen, have uh, just eclipsed 100 wins for the season, can Mark top his previous best uh, set in 2012 when training with Grant Payne of 138 wins? Well, one would think it's got to be on the cards uh, when you consider his record uh, over the years. Of course, he's a nine-time Premiership winning trainer. Four times he's been runner-up. Uh, and here is uh, the list of his Premierships. Uh, 100 at the moment, 114 in 2012-13. There's that record of 138 in the other uh, Premiership wins. As I come to you, Michael Guerin, I suppose... The 138 is definitely on. Can he get to 168 set by his father, Roy, and brother, Barry, back in the mid-90s? And Addington Raceway this week, to give you an example, 20 runners going around for the barn, 25 in total from Alexandra Park uh, and Rangiora again on Sunday. So could it be on? To get to 138, or 168 they won't get. To get to 138, uh, I think they need to have a really big month now. And uh, Greg, what's helped the... Uh, um, premiership numbers so far this season are those trips to Southland. They've been crucial. They've probably got at least 20, 25 wins out of Southland, I would say. They've spent more time in the country. Um, they haven't had a horse like I Can Do It or Auckland Reactor that they needed to travel with all the time. And this is just another example of them just going down south and dominating. Let's not forget Willow was in a maiden race. I mean, you know, back in September or whenever it was, back you know down in that part of the world. So the move to go south has been very smart for them. It's given them two South Island bases. I think they'll need a month, Greg, where they get to, say, another 20 in the next six weeks. If they get there, that's fine. But they've also got to start travelling for the Australian pacing gold. The heats of that start this week. Then they've got later in the season, you think, a little bit of time away. Not having those big horses away gives them more time to concentrate at home. I think they'll get close to 138. They won't get to 168. Here's an amazing stat about their season so far. Uh, one horse has cost them an enormous amount on their bottom line. Four wins, it's cost them, and about 600,000 in stakes. Terror to Love has only won five races, well, you're gonna love this, only won five races in this country this year. Purden Rasmussen trained runners have reigned second in four of those, including the New Zealand Cup, Fly Like an Eagle, the Auckland Cup, adore me, the Inter-Dominion heat for 50k, Smolder, and the Northern Southland Cup for $45,000, Arden Rooney. So take care of the love out of play. Sure, they've won four more races. They've also won about $600,000 more. Remarkable to think that every time Terra to Love wins, and let's go back 17 months, Highview Tommy ran second to Terra to Love in a New Zealand Cup. Uh, he's costed them an awful lot of money. Absolutely, 10% of 600000 That's about half of your wages a year, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, about probably a third maybe anyway. But I think 138 is achievable. What, that's four months of the season left to go, 40 wins, what, 10 a month? So I think you're right, Michael. I think they'll have to have two exceptional months in the, uh, in the upcoming months because what happens prior after Jules is they turn their good three-year-olds out. Uh, while they can get every second win free, they'll keep them going. And they've got a really good three-year-olds, like some gentle western Bassini. Um, the list continues. Willow, I mean, these horses will continue on until the jewels and then they'll get biffed out, but they've got great two-year-old stock coming through as well. So when, when you consider that really big year, the 138 year, well, I think that was I Can Do It in Auckland Reactor in the same year, and that gets you 20, 25 wins. Now, Adore Me might get them another two or three, but she's not going to dominate the four-year-old boys, and she's not going to, she'll, she'll win the jewels, yeah. but that might be the next time she races her own sex. So they may not have a... 10 win horse in the team. Yeah, I think also you got to remember when they had those 138 wins, they had 460 starters. They've had 345 already. Yeah. Would they have another 120 starters in the next four months? Yeah, and, and also they're not, not going to chase. Yeah, you know, they follow the stars over there. I mean, yeah, so it, it's going to, Greg, okay, yes, no. 138, yes, no. Definitely 160, no. Okay. okay. I'll with him. Greg. That's good. <laughs> 140, definitely on the cards. Look, I think they'll, they'll clearly have 120 starters because they've got 25 this week to start with and uh, the Premier meetings at Addington followed by Auckland uh, should ensure that that happens. Just on that barn, uh, three runners headed, of course, to the APG. Follow the stars, Supersonic Miss and Kept Under Wrap. Supersonic Miss starts this week at Menangle in a heat of that series and I think it's come up with about barrier number seven. And incidentally, Sir Fedra have his first start there for Belinda and Luke McCarthy.
Rightio, Whale, it's your turn. We're up for your top five. And uh, Michael uh, had his go last week. Let's see how you line up your top five paces for the last 20 years. Oh, thanks, Greg. Uh, my five, a little bit similar to to Michael, probably a little bit uh, mixed around in, in the format. Uh, my number five starts with Al Sue. Champion three-year-old, uh, of course, won his first race by three and a half lengths, including the New Zealand Ye- Yelling Sales $180,000 race at three. He won the Derby, beating uh, Light and Sound and Howard Bromack at four. He won the 2003 Auckland Cup Waikato Flying Mile. 153, the Taylor Mile and the Messenger at five. He won the 2004 Auckland Cup and the Inter Dominions. He was a wonderful horse and won over $2 million, Al Soup. So I had him at number six, Michael, changed him to number five after uh, you last so week, making a very, very good case. Well, actually, I had Master Musician at six, and I know you had him at seven, but I thought he was a wonderful horse. But uh, it was very hard to, you know, the top five, yeah. especially around four and five. One to three I could find very easily, but four and five very difficult. Number four? Number four, I ended up with Choken. I know you had him at number one last week. Uh, he's a horse that, uh, he, he just did a wonderful job. Um, a very, very good two-year-old. Uh, he won the size stakes at two, group one two-year-old champs at Auckland. Uh, he won the Rising Stars at three, beating Giovanetto and the Sire Stakes final, beating Giovanetto, who went on to place in the New Zealand Cup. At four, he won the Messenger, the Group 2 Flying Mile, the Easter Cup, uh, beating Master Musician, who was, who was one of my favourites at the time. New Zealand Free For All, 93 Auckland Cup, 94 Auckland Cup off 15 metres, beating Victor Supreme, Miracle Mile and Victoria Cup. I can understand why you are passionate about it. I know some very good judges, the likes of Tony Hurley and Morris McHenry, thought he was one of the best horses they ever drove. Choking, my number four in the top five. Number three this year, for me, Terra to Love. Uh, he has just been an unbelievable form this season. Of course, he's a six-year-old stallion now, 27 wins. Uh, won his first race as a two-year-old, and that was the Sapling Stakes back in 2010 at three. He won the Group 2 Flying Stakes, dead hitting with Gold Ace. And of course, four, five, and six, those were his years. Group 3 Glen Ferry, uh, Glen Ferry Farm Classic. New Zealand Cup 2008, beating the Warhorse Smoking Up. Taylor Mile at Auckland, beating Better Cover Lover. Group 1 Jules, 154 at Cambridge. At 5, he won the Flying Stakes. 2012 New Zealand Cup, beating Sushi Sushi amongst rivals. Into Dominion Heat, Group 1 Easter Cup. Second in the Harness Jules, uh, second Harness Jules in 151. And this is his win in the 2000 New Zealand Cup, beating Chris and me. Unbelievable performance after losing 30 metres. Mark McNamara calls him home the last 150 metres. Of course, after winning the Cup, he went on to win the Auckland Cup. 3.15.8, outstanding time at Alexandra Park not that long ago. You're chucking his Australian wins as well. Uh, Terra to love, he's made my top three. And if he wins the New Zealand Cup, his fourth New Zealand Cup, he would certainly improve on my listing anyway inside the top three. Number two. Well, one of my favourites, a horse that may be an awful lot of money and sentiment comes into these things when you tip horses, Monkey King. Three and a half million dollars in stake money. Unfashionably bred by Sands of Flying. He raced for six consecutive seasons. Started off winning the three-year-old Great Northern Derby, the Group 2 Flying Stakes at three. Four-year-old, the Polaris Classic, New Zealand Messenger, beating the Divisive, the Jewels at Ashburton. At five, he won the Easter Cup, the Group 2 City of Auckland Stakes. Six-year-old, the Easter Cup off 20 metres. Seven-year-old, he won the 2009 New Zealand Cup beating Smoking Up. The New Zealand free-for-all beating the likes of Changeover, Mr Feelgood, Auckland Reactor. This is his 2010 New Zealand Cup beating Smoking Up. Mark McNamara calls the last 200 metres. The monkey's brave. He comes, Monkey King at Smoking Up. He hit the lead, Monkey King. Ricky Mays going to win another New Zealand Cup. You play it again. Monkey King will be smoking up in Sleepy Troop. Power of Tara fourth. Then I view Tommy, Stunnin Cullen Bondi. Next in was Georgetown, Lord Fourth. Of course, you're chucking his miracle mile win and 39 wins, racing for six consecutive seasons, right through from that uh, very first win 
Uh, he is a super horse and uh, now as an 11 year old Sands of Flying enjoying uh, the son of Sands of Flying Monkey King enjoying retirement he is my number two so number one a horse that I thought had the X factor his name Christian Cullen for me he was an unbelievable specimen he was what I would say is the Brad Pitt of harness racing he was Mr. Good Looking. Only 31 starts, 22 wins. Some of them in freakish fashion. He won his first race as a two-year-old by five lengths. He won the Group 2 Welcome Stakes by three and a half lengths as a two-year-old and $180,000 sales series at Addington. At three, he came back and won the Rising Stars. He won the New Zealand Sire Stakes, beating Holmes DG of a super era. He won the three-year-old Group 1 free for all beating Brabham and Master Musician. He won the sales uh, series at Alexandra Park by three and a half lengths and the Group 2 three-year-old championship. He came back at four. He won the Superstars, the Ashburton Flying Stakes, beating Heracles, the 1998 New Zealand Cup, the free-for-all defeating Holmes DG, the Auckland Cup in 359 we saw last week, the Waikato Flying Mile, and of course the Miracle Mile amongst others. We go back and have a look at one of, I think, his best performances and one that certainly uh, was a spine tingling performance and I thought a great call by Hilton Donaldson. This is Christian Cullen blowing them away in the 2008 Miracle Mile. Heracles dropped out, but it's all Christian Cullen. He's 10 metres in front of TaylorMade Lombo. Then our Sir Vancelot, he's done it there. Now he's done it here. Hail the new Australasian champion, Christian Cullen. He won the Miracle Mile by 20 metres in a time of 154.4. Second TaylorMade Lombo. Our Sir Vancelot battled away from... We Franco probably never saw the best of him, as I say. And he only had 31 starts. He won on 22 occasions, but... Uh, what his progeny have done since he, he uh, was sent to the, uh, to, the, to the paddock and to be a stallion has been unbelievable. He was, as a specimen, Michael Guerin, one of the best horses I've ever seen. And Greg O'Connor, his uh, progeny have continued on. And that's why Michael Guerin spent $200,000 at the sales buying this good looking son of In the Pocket. Nice wrap there, Craig. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Christian Cullen, Monkey King, Terror to Love, uh, Choking and Al Sue, and he's found uh, Christian Cullen as his best in the last 20 years. Uh, nice bit of research there, too. And I'll be on uh, next week having a crack at my top five uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, mentioned before, bit of a change uh, in vocation, if you like, uh, for Brendan Hill. And uh, we sent Matt Cross out to find out exactly what he was up to. Well, a few changes coming up, Benny. Do you want to just simply talk us through what's happening at Dancing on Moonlight? Yeah, there's a few changes, mate. Um, Robert and I are sort of going our own ways, um, but staying together in a roundabout way. Um, just been given the opportunity to go out on my own and train from there. Um, Robert would like to put some more horses through the sales and um, sort of just frees us up in our, both our directions going forward, so really looking forward to it. The combination of Robert and yourself have been a great success over the years. Monkey King and Carabella, you'd expect that to carry on? It'd be nice if it could. Um, it's been an incredible ride. Um, the grounding and the horses I've been given through Robert have been a great grounding for me going forward. And just, yeah, it's, it's sort of restarting again, but to get, uh, to get a, horse, a horse or any of those horses again would be, would be great. With Robert moving into the breeding side of things, how many mares have you got on the property at the moment? Yeah, I think Robert still got about 20 mares. Um, I'm, like a few of them are in fold of raging bulls so you know I'll get them to train and um, it frees Robert up to do what he wants with the other ones for the sales and, um, and, and that side of it. Let's talk of goals throughout the season, you've had a pretty good season so far and the seasons before this you've had an incredible strike rate, is there one thing that you would like to achieve within the next 12 months? Yeah I've been asked that a few times, look I think, um, I think it's, I've got to say owners, um, I've got a few and got a handful and Robert's probably my biggest owner still and, but I'd just like to build a little little ownership, own a clientele and, and go from there to be honest. At what stage are you stepping out by yourself? Uh, we've pinched it in the 1st of May so um, we're definitely looking at that and um, really looking forward to it.